Professor Yun's The Evolution Theory from the Viewpoint of Christianity, the Thorough Analysis of the Descent or Origin of Man, Lecture 14, Chapter 10, Secondary Sexual Characters of Insects. In the immense class of insects, the sexes sometimes differ in their locomotive organs, but we are chiefly concerned with the structures by which one male is enabled to conquer another, either in battle or courtship, through his strength, pugnacity, ornaments, or music. In male dragonflies, the appendages at the tip of the tail are modified in an almost infinite variety of curious patterns to enable them to embrace the neck of the female. It is astonishing how many different organs are worked in by nature for the seemingly insignificant object of enabling the male to grasp the female Formally. The sexes of many species in all the orders present difference, of which the meaning is not understood. With insects of all kinds, the males are commonly smaller than the females, and this difference can often be detected even in the larval state. So considerable is the difference between the male and female cocoons of the silk moth that in France they are separated by a particular mode of weighing. In the lower classes of the animal kingdom, the greater size of the females seems generally to depend on their developing an enormous number of ova and this may to a certain extent hold good with insects. In proportion as the individual moth is finer, so is the time required for its metamorphosis longer, and for this reason the female, which is larger and heavier insect, from having to carry her numerous eggs, will be preceded by the male, which is smaller and has less to mature. Now, as most insects are short-lived, and as they are exposed to many dangers, it would manifestly be advantageous to the female to be impregnated as soon as possible. This end would be gained by the males being first matured in large numbers ready for the advent of the females, and this again would naturally follow through natural selection. But the most curious case is that of the oculate hymenoptera. The males, in accordance with the general rule throughout nearly the whole of this large group, are smaller than the females, and emerge about a week before them. But amongst the bees, there are cases that the males are larger than the females. The explanation of this anomaly is that a marriage flight is absolutely necessary with these species, and the male requires great strength and size in order to carry the female through the air. The sexes in diptera differ in color. The greatest difference is in the genus Bibio, in which the males are blackish or quite black, and the females obscure brownish orange. The genus Elaphomia, discovered by Mr. Wallace in New Guinea, is highly remarkable as the males are furnished with horns, of which 
the females are quite destitute. They might be thought to be adapted for fighting, but as in one species, they are of a beautiful pink color, edged with black with a pale central stripe, and as these insects have all together a very elegant appearance, it is perhaps more probable that they serve as ornaments. The males of the Samdiptera fight together is certain. The males of other diptera apparently try to win the females by their music. Hermann Miller watched for some time two males of an Aristotle's courting a female. They hovered above her and flew from side to side, making a high humming noise at the same time. Nets and mosquitoes also seem to attract each other by humming, and Professor Meyer recently ascertained that the hairs on the antennae of the male vibrate in unison with the notes of a tuning fork within the range of the sound emitted by the female. The longer hairs vibrate sympathetically with the graver notes and the shorter hairs with the higher ones. The males of some species in Hermiptera are furnished with wings, whilst the females are wingless. The sexes differ in the form of their bodied elytral antennae and tarsi, but as the signification of this difference is unknown. The females are generally larger and more robust than the males, with British and as far as Mr. Douglas knows, with exotic species, the sexes do not commonly differ much in colors, but sexes of some species are beautifully colored, as these insects emit an extremely nauseous odor. Their conspicuous colors may serve as a signal that they are unpalatable to insectivorous animals, but I have no reason to suppose that this is a sexual character. The second half of chapter 10 continues in the next lecture. Shalom Aleyhem.